still on gender things there was a uh, debate over the last couple of weeks I, I always talk about this is a little bit um i talk about how uh, I, one thing I like about Japanese politics is that it doesn't politicize very much. You know, when, you, when you're in New Zealand or Australia or America and you have an election, the party manifestos that the parties put out, you know, the, the, the presidential debates, when they work, <laughs> which is which I, they may never work again, but when they do work, you know, you have three debates, hour-long debates or two-hour-long debates or whatever, talking about foreign policy, the economy, you know, jobs. You have all of these sort of categories and all these detailed policies on each one of what you're going to do. In Japan, you know, it's kind of like um, uh, smiles are good. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll do a slogan. They, they never used manifestos. The, the Democrats used a manifesto, which is revolutionary, and they got elected when they did it, and then they tore it up and ignored it, and they got kicked out for it. And then everyone said, okay, we're not going to do the manifesto thing anymore because it's too dangerous when we break all the promises. Um, but yeah, in a way, not having detailed manifestos means that things like immigration, um, controversial social sort of issues just don't get politicized. It gets left to the tenured bu bureaucrats, which can be a bad thing because they're not accountable and they, they can, uh, in, in cases like vaccines and whatnot, they can slow things down and stop innovation. But uh, yeah, there again, sometimes you just don't want the politicians who are like the least qualified people in some matters, uh, like the thing happening in the UK at the moment with the, with the inquiry into the, the, the COVID-19 thing. Uh, people admitting themselves that, you know, they should not be making important scientific decisions, you know. Uh, interesting case here, LGBT, uh, there, there, was a, there was a committee which is proposing to uh, put into law uh, d prohibiting discrimination against LGBT people, basically an equal rights bill, uh, proposed law for ensuring equal rights, including marriage equality, um, and uh, as well as prohibiting discrimination about uh, against LGBT people based on their gender identity. And I got stuck in, an, uh, in a Liberal Democratic Party committee uh, with a number of people, uh, mostly all over 80 uh, or 90. Um, they got a woman, the only woman on the committee, to sort of speak up and talk for them. And uh, yeah, they said that uh, they can't approve this law because the idea that it could be made illegal simply for saying discriminatory uh, words, uh, you know, for simply uh, discriminating against LGBT people, people, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> it was literally what she said. Uh, it's like, what are we going to do if we can't discriminate against LGBT people? You know, how is that supposed to work? As well as a, a bunch of other comments, which people unfortunately made publicly, including like, well, they're not normal, you know. So in a way, this is the problem. When, when you offer the opportunity for them to do the right thing, it also gives them the opportunity to do the exact opposite thing. And while social stigma in other countries um, can still censor uh, behavior when you've got you know 80 90 year olds uh, their the, their peer group are not people who you know think any differently to them so the result is unfortunately the, the bill got killed uh, because explicitly the government felt like oh they didn't want to criminalize people simply for discriminating against LGBT people like what which is like the whole point <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, Japan, it's uh, one step forward and uh, 100 meters sprint backwards sometimes. And this is one of those cases. The thing is, of course, on this, the story in Japan is generally positive. Um, right now, municipalities, uh, the local government level, like I talked about in the beginning, uh, half the wards in Tokyo, all these cities in Japan recognize uh, LGBT marriages. Uh, uh, they'll register uh, de facto sort of couples as uh, with an equivalent of a marriage certificate, in, which entitles them increasingly entitled to things like insurance and other benefits. And this is basically to take out the the ambiguity. So what happens if you get you live in Shibuya and you're married? to your same-sex partner and then you move somewhere else that doesn't recognize it and you can't claim the same benefits if they're giving you a benefit in Shibuya, a spousal benefit, that you can't get if you move to Hachioji. I don't know if that's the case in Hachioji. Um, you know, to, to take out the administrative inconsistency given that there's a growing consensus that you know this should just be treated the same. Uh, but yeah, killed by the national government because they opened it up for a debate, which is a shame, but that's what happens. Uh, so yes, 